think a lot of people listening to this conversation might be thinking, oh, like, uh, well, like serendipity or luck is like, it's, it's random. It's not like something you could kind of control. And I'm sure part of luck is kind of like complete random, but there's also part like you say, you call it smart luck in your book. So can you kind of define the difference between like blind luck and smart luck? Absolutely. And, you know, blind luck really being this luck, like being born into a great family or things that we really don't choose, right? It's just passive. It's just happening to us. And then serendipity really as this active smart luck. That's all about seeing something in the moment and then connecting the dots. So, you know, take the example of uh, a couple of decades ago, some researchers giving people medication against angina, and then they realized, oh, wow, there's some kind of movement happening in male participants' trousers. And, you know, that was unexpected, right? And they could have just ignored it or they could have said, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. Let's, let's find a better way to cure angina without that kind of quote unquote side effect. But they said, you know what? Actually, there's probably a lot of men in the world who might have a problem in that department. So why don't we try to figure out if that could be a medication in itself? And that's how unexpectedly Viagra evolved, right? So what happened here is that what people did is they made an accident meaningful. They imbued meaning in that accident by connecting the dots to something relevant. And that's how a lot of innovations and inventions happen. But also, you know, when we think about our lives, right, maybe the way we found love or our investor or our co-founder, like a lot of these things are in the unexpected. Something unexpected happens, but it's our proactive decisions that then turn it into that kind of luck. And so it's really that, to your point, interplay between something random happening but then our response to it defining the outcome. Yeah, and I, uh, just just like you uh, mentioned about the story about Viagra, and uh, yeah, I was really blown away to find out, I believe it was like 30 or 50%, it was like scientific breakthroughs are like accidental, like they're all luck. But you also have the story about, um, I'm kind of I'm gonna blunder this experiment, but that's, I believe it had something to do with like rabbits, and then both two scientists discovered it, but then one actually acted on it, and he ended up winning the Nobel Prize. And it's kind of not just discovering that luck; it's kind of doing something with it. Um, yeah, and that, that was like a really interesting uh, part of the book as well. Absolutely, and that's the fascinating thing I think you know from a research perspective in terms of saying how can we know the difference between serendipity missed and serendipity gained, right? Because a lot of times in life we just miss serendipity. We either, even, either we didn't really see it, right, in the moment, um, and I'll, I'll give you an example in a second, or we don't really have the persistence to really go through with it. And in that particular um, experiment, or in, in that example, what was fascinating was exactly that, that two researchers at the same time injected rabbits with papain and, and both saw these kind of rabbit's ears flopping. But only one of them actually kind of followed through and said, oh, my God, maybe that has to do with like bloodstream and X, Y, Z. And then kind of they developed this amazing arthritis medication that won a lot of prices and, and so on. And, and I think it's really this where then we can understand, oh, if you have two people who have exactly the same unexpected moment, but react differently to it, we can then trace that and, and find that. And, you know, I think we all have that in our own lives. I mean, imagine that kind of situation, you know. If you have erratic hand movements like I do, imagine the situation where you spill coffee over someone in, in the coffee shop and you sense there might be some kind of connection with that person. You don't know what it is. It's just like in your gut something, ah, maybe there's something. Now you have two options, right? Option number one is you just say, I'm so sorry, here's a napkin. You walk outside and you think, ah, what could have happened had I spoken with a person? And then option number two, you know, you start a conversation, that person becomes the love of your life, your co-founder, you name it. And the point here is, again, the reaction to the unexpected moment really shaping a lot of that, that outcome. Yeah, and I, I really like how in your book, you kind of break it down to like a formula where you have, uh, you need a trigger, you need to connect the dots, and you need tenacity. Uh, could, could, can you, could, could you kind of dive into and uh, kind of explain that formula? Yeah, absolutely. And that's really something where the idea is that usually there's something that's random that's happened, right? Some kind of trigger, like this kind of spilling the coffee or movement in male participants' trousers or something else that's kind of just unexpected. And then it's up to us to, to do something with it, to connect the dots to something meaningful, to something relevant, and then have the tenacity to really go through with it. And, you know, I think what's, what's exciting about this is that when you trace back a lot of these kind of serendipitous inventions, innovations, but also when people have their own personal serendipity stories, what it shows us is it's not only this one moment. It's not only the moment of bumping into someone at a conference. It's essentially the process of 
doing something with that moment of bumping into someone. And I think that's fascinating. And especially also for introverts, right? Like I always assumed before I dove deeper into this, oh, this is so much about extroversion and interacting with people. But no, like closet introverts like myself, a lot of serendipity happens when you read a book or when you take another street to work and you see something in the bookstore and you're like, oh my God, like people haven't talked about this for ages. This should be a podcast, you know? So it's kind of these things where we can connect the dots from silent sources, from calm sources as well. 